15 times, humans fell in love with monsters and movies. Love and death are two of the most potent driving forces in films and fiction. When these two are merged together in delicately calculated proportions, they give rise to the genre of horror romance. Horror romances often deal with notions of desire, and this desire is so strong that all notions of common sense and sanity are swept under the carpet. The characters in a horror romance find themselves in love with all kinds of demons, zombies, beasts, and ghosts, and this very monstrosity excites and attracts the lovers. It acts as a magnet between the two terribly opposite lovers. If you aren't in the mood for some mushy romance comedies, then these twisted, lovesick films will bring a smile to your face. So let's take a closer look at some of the most celebrated horror films that stayed true to the essence of romance. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> 1. Bite 2015 Bride-to-be Casey and her friends Jill and Kristen visit Costa Rica for a bachelorette trip. She takes the road not taken and goes swimming in a secluded lagoon where a bizarre bug bites her. Casey is worried about her wedding with Jared and doesn't pay any attention to the bite. After returning home, she experiences strange changes in her body and habits. Casey develops rashes, insect-like behavior like building hives, weaving webs, and superhuman, or rather, inhuman, excretions. After Casey finds out that there's another woman between him and Jared, she develops murderous tendencies. If we had to describe this film in four words, we would go for love at first bite. You've seen horror films, and you have also seen love triangles. In this film, Chad Archibald gives you a woman turned into an insect, and she is jealous, very jealous. Bite deals with a woman's cold feet about her marriage, her husband who desperately wants to have a baby, her to-be mother-in-law who is far from loving, and a friend who is secretly in love with her fiance. The film is a horrifying study of its characters and the relationships that they share with each other. Bite has a rocky start, but then lifts off with rocket speed in terms of its gore and romance factors. The special effects are sure to gross you out with scenes where gooey substances come out of Casey's body and the vulgar excretions from her private parts. Elma Begovic plays the lead in this movie, and special mention must be given to her acting, despite being wrapped in thick makeup for the most part of the film. <laughs> 2. Meatball Machine 2005 Yoji shares unrequited love for his co-worker, Sachiko. One day, he finds another co-worker sexually assaulting Sachiko. He goes to her rescue but is beaten up. Sachiko loves his effort and gesture and decides to go to his home for the night. Things take a turn when an alien bug infects Sachiko in Yoji's house. It transforms her into a killer cyborg. Later, Yoji is also infected, and the would-be lovers fight in a gore and viscerally exaggerated fashion. There's also a subplot dealing with a father whose daughter, was infected by a similar alien bug that transformed her into a necroborg. This Japanese film boasts some rich violence and a subtle but abnormal love story. There are body transformations into mean weapons of all kinds. Yoji blames himself for Sachiko's ill fate. The elegant girl he loved so much has now become an unrelenting killing machine, and it's all his doing. Yet. There are scenes in the film which prove that the sweet girl inside Sachiko is not entirely lost. Yoji battles with the dilemma of fighting the love of his life and saving the world from her wrath. The horror factor is compelling due to the special effects. The bodies of both our necroborgs transform into flamethrowers, cannons, darts, and guns. Limbs are cut down to the ground and blood splatters and sprays all around. Sachiko's conversion into the cyborg is a sensory overload in itself. The only downside to the film is the lack of a strong story. Still, directors Yudai Yamaguchi and Junichi Yamamoto keep the viewer so engrossed with all the action and horror that the film feels satisfying. <laughs> 3. Mutants 2009 
Marco and Sonia are a young couple that hides in an isolated building to survive a zombie apocalypse in their city. The vast majority of the population has transformed into bloodthirsty zombies. Soon, things take a drastic turn when Marco gets infected and slowly starts to transform into the monster that the couple was trying to evade. Adding to the critical situation, Sonia finds out that she is pregnant and also immune to the zombie virus. This zombie movie fits graciously in our list of romantic horrors because it does the job of showing a surprisingly emotional relationship in the midst of blood oozing out and guts being slashed. Mutants swims in the uncharted waters of love during a human and zombie carnage. The gore quotient is high in this film, but so is the emotional quotient with Sonia's pregnancy and her unyielding love for her undead lover. Filmmaker David Morlet has taken mutants above and beyond a regular zombie film by making the viewer ponder on some dark psychological questions. Ellen de Figueroles plays Sonia, and she has done a terrific job at portraying her love for the infected man. The more he decays, the more her love and concern grow for him. The body horror in this film is sufficient to get your stomach to clench. There is also a subplot including a band of thugs that Sonia has to deal with to save herself and her unborn child. All things aside, Mutants is a zombie flick and we assure you of a thrilling climax with hordes of zombies and a lot of killings. Four. The Beast, aka La Bête, 1975. Lucy is an impressionable young heiress who comes to France for an arranged marriage with Mathurin de l'Espérance, an aristocratic family's socially awkward scion. The de l'Espérance family hides many secrets. One of the stories is about an ancestor from centuries ago who went missing and whose undergarment was found covered in claw marks. Lucy stays the first night in the de l'Espérance chateau and she has a steamy dream about a Victorian lady being ravished by a beast in the dark woods. Right around the beginning of the film, director Valerian Barocek throws a weird horse's rumpy pumpy scene on our faces. Such a scene prepares us for the crazy things that are to follow. The Beast is a film that merges hedonism with horror instead of love. Lucy and Mathurin's marriage is the central theme of the story and it's probably there to channel the bestiality and steaming tension in a sophisticated manner. The dream sequences in the film have a somewhat humorous undertone to them. A beast with an enormous reproductive organ runs after a young woman. The beast ultimately pleasures himself while beholding her. The film is a very peculiar mixture of the sinister and the libidinous and is painted with surrealism. Interestingly, at one point in time, it was banned all across Britain. Five, Splice, 2009. Elsa and Clive are the geniuses of the biotechnology engineering world. Their specialization lies in splicing or intertwining the strands of DNA to create new hybridized animals and creatures. However, the successful couple desires more and wishes to use human DNA and create a new hybrid. They believe this could give them unimaginable medical benefits. However, the pharmaceutical company that they work for objects to this ambitious project. This forces Elsa and Clive to finally carry out the experiment in a secret facility without the knowledge of their superiors. The genetic experiment gives birth to Drin. She is a wonderful human-like creature with inexplicable levels of intellectual and physical development. She is far superior to humans and exceeds the couple's expectations. And yet, Elsa and Clive's most tremendous success will soon become their greatest cause of fear and horror. Vincenzo Natalie's Splice is a story of two geneticists who love to play God. Delphine Chignac plays Drin, and she is just about perfect in this sci-fi horror. We have included Splice in our list because of Dren and Clive's unusual and socially unacceptable relationship. The human DNA in Dren came from Elsa, and that makes her Clive's daughter. Yet, they consummate, and this has strong incestuous themes. Adding to the weirdness is Dren's age. She is an adolescent when they make love, which raises questions of consent and pedophilia. If you thought that the weird is over, then hold on a moment. 
Drin is a hermaphrodite, and in one of the scenes, she transforms into a man only to become more aggressive and do something dreadfully evil and horrid with Elsa. This film will have you repulsed and leave you with intense levels of aversion and nausea. Six, Spring, 2014. Evan is a young man from California who has lost his father and is about to lose his mother to cancer. After she passes away, he aimlessly flees to Italy. In a small and picturesque town of Italy, he meets Luis, who is a scientist. Luis is funny, smart, attractive, and Evan immediately gets smitten by her. However, Luis has a dark secret. Both Evan and Luis will have to make tough decisions if they wish to stay together. A man, a woman, and some classy Lovecraftian monstrosity. This is the theme of Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead's Spring that stars Lou Taylor Pucci as Evan and Nadia Hilker as Luis. The film is equal parts horror and equal parts rom-com. The genre blurring in this film is rather charming than messy. Spring is generally not a scary film, but the creature effects and special effects are noteworthy. The horror elements are not the focus of the film, and they are there only to help the story and build a tense and emotional relationship between Evan and Luis. The directors wanted the audience to focus on the budding relationship of two souls who were far from alike, but share a blooming romance. The chemistry that Taylor and Hilker share on the screen adds to the film's charm and sensuality. At certain points, the film seems to overexpress itself, and the plentiful dialogues tend to kill the interest. But the indie romance, with its cosmic horror elements, merge together to make Spring a must watch for a horror fan. Suppose you need yet another reason to watch Spring. The cinematography is outstanding, with some of the most beautiful drone shots of the Roman ruins and classic Italian villas that overflow with flamboyance. Seven, The Untamed, 2016. Alejandra and Angel are in an unhappy marriage. The primary reason is Angel's secret homosexuality and his relationship with his brother-in-law, Fabian. This often leaves Alejandra frustrated and unsatisfied. They live in an orthodox Mexican town where concepts like physical pleasure, self-indulgence, and homosexuality are socially unacceptable. Fabian works as a nurse in a hospital where he meets Veronica. Fabian and Veronica fall in love, and this leads to a breakup between Fabian and Angel. Veronica comes across Alejandra and tells her about an octopus-like alien that can cure all her woes and frustration. Soon, Fabian is found naked and dead. Meanwhile, Alejandra finds out about her husband's homosexuality. Alejandra keeps on visiting the alien to fulfill her needs and desires, while more and more dead bodies are discovered. The Untamed is the story of a woman and a beast who are in a strictly carnal relationship. After carrying out her duties as a mother and a wife, Alejandra seeks to become a woman and enjoy her body, as the tentacles of an otherworldly creature please her. She doesn't love this beast, but it is her source of happiness and she fails to give it up. Ruth Ramos, who plays Alejandra, has done a tremendous job in the film. Her performance is realistic and almost surreal. Let's look at our highly promiscuous love octopus. It has numerous tentacles to pleasure several points in the body. It has a peculiarly intelligent looking head, and most importantly, it radiates some kind of sensual energy, which makes even animals go wild and crazy. Cannes winning director, Amat Escalante, has directed this ultra-twisted horror romance. Eight, Possession, 1981. After Mark returns from a secret business trip, he is shocked to find his wife, Anna, wanting a divorce. This puts the couple in a tight spot, and Mark starts having fits of rage. The couple starts fighting verbally and physically, and the only casualty of this marital war is their little son, Bob. As he finds no plausible reason for Anna's unusual demand for a divorce, he suspects she is in an extramarital relationship. He hires a private detective to follow Anna. Mark ultimately finds out that Anna has been fulfilling her physical desires with someone, or rather something. It's a tentacled beast with blood all over its body, that is constantly evolving into something more diabolic. Mark intends to save his marriage, but gets into a complicated relationship with Bob's teacher, Helen, who is the spitting image of Anna. The climax of this film will leave you surprised and shocked. Directed by Polish director, 
Andrzej Zulawski, and starring Sam Neill as Mark. This film is about a woman's possession. Unfulfilled sexual desires make people go to such lengths that they can't possibly return to their usual lives. Isabel Adjani bagged her Cannes Award for this bold and powerful performance as Anna. Zulawski makes sure that Isabel's performance looks real and believable when she shares a bed with the monster. There's grace in what they do, but at the same time, the act itself is nefarious. In this raunchy pursuit of pleasure, both Anna and the tentacled monster get so consumed that they ultimately lose who they are. Mark tries to save his marriage at all costs, but he is conflicted in his own mind. The film is an elegant mix of horror, romance, and psychological thriller, and it is one of those films that leave the viewer silent as the credits start rolling. Really? 9. Let the Right One In 2008 Oscar is a sensitive, unhappy, and bullied 12-year-old boy who lives in Stockholm with his mother. A man and a girl start residing in a vacant property near his home. Eli watches Oscar ruthlessly stabbing a tree and soon befriends him. Eli's beauty is captivating, and there's something strange about her personality that attracts Oscar and soon the two of them fall in love. Eli soon tells Oscar about her macabre side. She is an undead girl who thrives on blood. Hakan is the man who helps her get it by killing people and collecting their blood in a two liter milk cartons, which she later drinks. The story progresses as Hakan makes a mistake. Let the Right One In is a fairy tale between a boy and a vampire. The elements of horror and fear are captivating, and at the same time, the chemistry between Kerr Hedenbrandt and Lena Leanderson, playing Oscar and Eli, is enchanting. Throughout the runtime of the film, the audience is thrown into a pit of fright and suspense, but the very next scene lifts you to the bond that young Oscar and Eli share. The little boy knows about the little bloodthirsty vampire's secrets, and yet chooses to love her. He is forced with a choice and thrown into a dilemma. The film is sweet and disturbing tale of young love. Thomas Alfredson has beautifully adapted the novel written by John Ashvid Lindquist into this film that ultimately asks a simple question, how much can love forgive? <coughs> 10. Teeth, 2007 Dawn and her friends have pledged to remain virgins until they get married. She is so motivated and dedicated to the belief that she has become a motivational speaker for the cause. Never has she been aroused in her whole life until a new boy called Toby joins the school. Dawn is attracted to Toby, both emotionally and otherwise. She fears that if this continues and she spends more time with Toby, then they will end up in bed and that is against her life's only motto. She decides not to meet Toby any further, but that doesn't immensely help things. Ultimately, Toby discovers that Dawn is biologically abnormal. Truth is that Dawn has razor sharp teeth inside her privates that bring the folklore of vagina dentata to life. However, Dawn's house is a more significant source of her tensions than her romantic life. She has an ailing mother, a horrible father, and a stepbrother who wants to take Dawn's carefully preserved virginity. If only he knew how preserved it was. <laughs> Writer and director Mitchell Leichtenstein has left no stone unturned and no theme untouched in this blood-spattered tale about the castration of sexual assaulters. The film has black comedy and satire, a bit of drama about a growing teen. It's a romance that has gone sour. It has hints of women empowerment and, above all, it's a horror B-movie with a lot of slashing and male reproductive parts dropping on the ground. As soon as the teeth in this film get busy with the teething, the gore starts to spread its jaws. Although this is done very subtly and in ways that are funny, Teeth remains a horror comedy where a monstrous girl falls in love with a normal boy at the end of the day, but the circumstances call for complexities. The film comes with plenty of funny and intelligent one-liners that are much needed comic relief through the film's 90 minutes runtime. I have decided to give her a name. A nurse. 11. Cold Skin, 2017. Set in 1914 and somewhere in the Antarctic Circle, a steamship comes to the shores of an island 
and brings with it an unnamed man to serve as a replacement of a weather observer. However, according to the lighthouse's caretaker named Gruner, the previous observer of the island probably died. Gruner names this man Friend, who soon finds that the island is plagued with humanoid sea creatures, as if they were what was left of Atlantean monsters. On most nights, these sea creatures attack the lighthouse, but the reason seems largely unknown. It's revealed that Gruner had abducted and raised one of the female sea creatures and was using her to fulfill his hedonistic needs. Friend names the creature Aneris and soon starts to care for her to the point that it seems he loves her. The two men must now save themselves from the creatures, but Friend also has to decide what to do with the watery love triangle. And not be repelled by her cold skin. Directed by Xavier Jens and based on a novel of the same name by Albert Sanchez Pignon, this film feels like a novel take on Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water. What works best for the film is a perfect cast in the form of Ray Stevenson as Gruner, David Oakes as Friend, and Ora Garrido as Aneris. However, there's also a deeper question that the film poses. Xavier never really reveals who the real bad guys are. Is it the human, or the creature, or both? Known for helming horror films like The Divide, Xavier Jens did a tremendous job at portraying a cross-species romance and the nuances that arrive because of that. Furthermore, he very smartly includes the theme of jealousy that exists within humans. Apart from a few issues arising from an inconsistent plot, this French-Spanish flick is worth your time. Twelve, The Shape of Water, 2017 Arisa Esposito lost her ability to speak back when she was a child. However, she grew up to become a cleaner at a secretive government facility. Her routine and monotonous life changed when Colonel Richard Strickland brought the amphibian man to the facility so that it could be studied in detail. However, Strickland soon convinces General Hoyt to carry out a vivisection on the amphibian man to learn more about him. When Elisa discovers this, she joins hands with her friends Zelda and Giles to extract the fish humanoid out of the facility. She takes the amphibian man home, where she keeps him in his bathtub, until the nearby canal gets enough rainwater to connect with the sea. On the one hand, Elisa and the amphibian man develop a romantic relationship and even sleep with each other, while on the other hand, Colonel Strickland would leave no stone unturned to retrieve his prized possession. This masterpiece of a film was written and directed by Guillermo del Toro, for which he won the Oscar for Best Direction. The Shape of Water is by far del Toro's best and most thoughtful work since Pan's Labyrinth. What makes the film a profoundly beautiful experience is the fact that it blends conflicting ideas to create something entirely novel, yet natural. I mean, the violence erupts suddenly and artistically, while the eroticism feels sweet yet sorrowful and scary. Sally Hawkins as Elisa Esposito and Doug Jones as the Amphibian Man are amazing in their respective roles. It continually felt like they knew what they were doing and the cross-species romance couldn't be more natural and humane than what was portrayed in the lovemaking scene. Thirteen, Fido, 2006. Fido is a story set in a parallel universe in which zombies overran the Earth after radiations from space infected almost all the dead. However, a government organization came up with a solution to protect the living. Not only did they fence the conglomerates inhabited by the living, but they also developed a collar that controlled a zombie's insatiable hunger. Furthermore, the zombies could be tamed and made to do menial household chores with the help of a remote that came with the collar. Under these settings, a housewife named Helen Robinson buys a zombie and brings him home. Helen's son Timmy befriends the undead human and names him Fido, while Helen's husband is petrified by the idea of a zombie living in his house. Things go well for a few days, despite the fact that Fido proved to be the crappiest house help. But things changed drastically when Fido's collar malfunctioned and he killed a neighbor by succumbing to his insatiable hunger. It'd be up to little Timmy and Helen to save Fido from a final end. 
Well, director Andrew Curry's Fido is not entirely a romance between a monster and a human, but it definitely is a film about a child's love for his friend. Even though the friend was a freaking zombie, while the comic element is not equitable to other comedies like Shaun of the Dead, Fido successfully glues its audience throughout the runtime. What works best for the film is its perfect casting, which includes Carrie Ann Moss as Helen Robinson. I mean, she is the same woman who once starred in the action-packed sci-fi film The Matrix. And here she was playing a housewife, struggling to maintain the status quo in an increasingly pretentious society. I'm learning where it comes from. For the first time in my life. 14. Hellboy 1. 2004, when the Nazis and a Russian mystic named Rasputin built a dimensional portal to summon Ogdru Jahad, the Allied forces thwarted the plan, and Rasputin was pulled into the portal. However, the portal did present something from another realm, a demonic infant boy whose right hand was made of stone. And Trevor Bruttenholm, the young man who guided the Allied forces, saw it fit to adopt this little boy. 60 years later, we find that Hellboy has joined the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, a special government wing that fights paranormal and supernatural criminals. Among Hellboy's allies are an amphibious humanoid named Abe Sapien, a new recruit named John Myers, and a brooding and somber woman named Liz Sherman, who has unstable pyrokinetic abilities. Unfortunately for everyone, Rasputin's old disciples resurrect him and bring him back. Rasputin intends to resume his plans of summoning Ogdru Jahad and sucks the soul of Liz Sherman so that it could be used as leverage against Hellboy. Will he be guided by love or will his demonic origins influence his decisions? I wish I could do something about this. Hellboy is definitely one of the finest pieces of work that Guillermo del Toro ever undertook, and it's an equally potent superhero film. Apart from the stunning monsters and effects that feature in the film, the thing that works best for the film is the budding romance between Hellboy and Liz Sherman. Both the characters share a heart as big as a house and add more colors to a film that's already rich in visual imagery. Fifteen, Warm Bodies, 2013, eight years after a zombie apocalypse, most humans died only to revive as zombies. Among them is a zombie who cannot remember his name, but is certain that it starts with an R. While the zombies roam around free and struggle with their insatiable hunger for human flesh and brain, the ones who are still alive live in enclosures. Colonel Grigio, the leader of one such enclosure, sends his daughter Julie and others to retrieve medical supplies. However, Julie gets attacked by a bunch of hungry zombies. R feels something about Julie, and his dead heart skips a beat. R saves Julie and brings her to an airplane where he lives. R convinces Julie that she should stay with him until it was safe for her to return home. They both indulge in playing games and LP records to kill time, and eventually, they get emotionally attached to one another. It seems that R's love for Julie is turning him human once again. Written and directed by Jonathan Levine and based on a novel written by Isaac Merian, the film tells a love story from a zombie's perspective. Nicholas Holt as R and Teresa Palmer as Julie share great on-screen chemistry and bring to life a relationship that was never meant to exist. Nicholas as a zombified boyfriend and Teresa as his full-of-life girlfriend often remind us of the chemistry Romeo and Juliet shared in Shakespeare's masterpiece. But if that's not something that appeals to you, watch it for the outstanding humor that Warm Bodies provides. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.